Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I'd like to present a patient with acromegaly as the first patient in this series of endocrine diseases. I'd like you to note, first of all, that this patient compared to the examiner is a very large man. He's six foot five inches tall and weighs approximately 190 pounds. Secondly, this patient has very coarse features. These features develop very subtly and in some cases, when we try and make this diagnosis of acromegaly, have to resort to old family photos to see these features developing, particularly a very prominent forehead, very large nose, the patient has prognathism, and spade-like hands. And during the interview, I'll compare my hands to those of the patient. Thirdly, this patient has a distinct lack of strength even though he appears large like a giant, he is in fact quite weak. He's becoming paralyzed due to an overgrowth, uh, a bony overgrowth in his spinal uh, column. Fourthly, patients with acromegaly have ease of infections, frequent pneumonias and other infections, and in fact have very poor wound healing. Which brings us to the fifth point, that these patients' infections linger. They may linger for months on end. Wound dehiscence is common following surgery. They have very poor connective tissue and in fact may complicate any oral surgery or dentistry because of this difficulty in healing. The sixth point I'd like to make is that there is a tremendous amount of oral pathology in patients with acromegaly. First, they have macroglossia, spreading teeth, and poor oral hygiene, all of which will be demonstrated by Dr. Millard in the ensuing section. I want to thank you for joining us today. I would like to demonstrate some of the findings associated with uh, the illness that you have and have been treated for for some time, acromegaly. The hands, in comparison to the size of my hands, the unusual nature of the size of your fingers and rather the shape of your hand. I think it, one can notice the length of your jaw and the unusual aspect of your nose and forehead. I understand that you've had some difficulties in the course of your illness with pneumonia. Yes. When was the last time you were hospitalized for pneumonia? Uh, 72. 1972. Yes. And you were treated for some time. That was quite a serious illness, wasn't it? Yeah, I was here for uh, seven months. Seven months. Yes. Have you had difficulties uh, with breathing in the past? Not really with breathing, no. Do you feel short of breath now? Oh, a little bit. I'm a little bit nervous right now. I see. <laughs> you were coughing up some sputum uh, earlier uh, earlier in your hospitalization. Can you describe the color of the sputum? It was a grayish yellow. Gray yellow yeah, sputum. Dark. And it was dark and it's changed now? Yes, it's clear. It's clear yes. now. Uh -huh. The last two days. The last clear. two days yes. it's been pretty clear. This is correlated nicely with the chest x-ray change and the improvement in the chest x-ray that we've seen. I understand that you've had some very extensive dental work. Yes. Has this been, for what reason? Decay. Decay of uh, yes. your teeth? Yes. Have any teeth fallen out? No, no, none fell out. None, they were removed? Yes. Uh -huh. When did you first start having serious dental problems? Uh, well, I think probably 66 maybe. 1966, yes. was that in, in connection with uh, your basic illness getting worse? I found out at Henry, Henry Ford Hospital mm -hmm. it was, yes. That it was uh, partly due to the fact of the acromegaly that right. you had. My teeth were spreading. And this was Teeth were spreading? Causing the trouble, yes. Uh -huh. I assume you have difficulty in caring for your oral hygiene. Yes. Because of the uh, partial paralysis and weakness of your hands. 
-hmm. Is that right? Right. Uh -huh. I don't want to put words. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Have you had any other difficulties in terms of chewing or eating? No. Mm -hmm. Any problems swallowing? No. Mm -hmm. Do you ever choke? No. Uh -huh. So you breathe pretty well? Yes. Uh -huh. You haven't noticed any progressive shortness of breath? No. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What about your strength? Well, I'm slowly getting weaker. Mm -hmm. It's a slow process. It's, but uh, I mean, year by year, I can see the difference. How tall are you? Six five. Six five. Mm -hmm. When you first noticed uh, this illness, what age were you? Uh, 30, well, I was a 36. Mm -hmm. Had you had a growth spurt or something that you could notice at that time? No. Mm -hmm. Was it gradual? Growth? Yes. No, I was six foot five when I was 19. You were quite cars. tall. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is your family tall? Uh, well, I've got three brothers. It's six foot. I'm the tallest one in the family. I see. Is there anybody else in your family who has this problem? No. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, thank you very much. Mr. Berry, uh, has your lower jaw always been as prominent as it is now? No. Uh, over how long a period have you noticed the change taking place? Well, I really didn't notice the change taking place. It's uh, been a very gradual situation. Yes, very slow. The feature uh, of Mr. Berry's mandible uh, is one of prognathism that is characteristic of uh, acromegaly. And uh, then let's take a look in his mouth and see if we can uh, define some of the other characteristics of the problem. Uh, the macroglossia that he demonstrates uh, is quite likely related. Uh, would you just uh, project your tongue forward uh, somewhat? I think you can see that uh, the tongue fills quite uh, predominantly the, the full space of the oral cavity. And uh, as we look at the teeth, uh, we could uh, conjecture that some of the spacing between the teeth uh, in the mandibola is, or is the result of uh, his uh, endocrine disturbance. There is uh, little to see in the maxillary arch. Uh, Mr. Berry's situation uh, is one that uh, presents with some cavities. Uh, and one remaining tooth, uh, of course, uh, the obvious treatment there is going to be uh, removal of those remaining teeth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.